good evening everyone so today we are going to see the post on estimation of vapor line size for a batch reactor in pharmaceutical industry in 2016 i have made a text post about this particular uh, calculation since then i have received multiple comments on that on to explain about the equation which is used in this particular calculation so today i would like to add few things about the derivation of this particular equation and then we can go and before that i would like to show you the post which is being highlighted so this is the post like calculate required vapor column dia and in this particular post we have used a equation which is basically derived from pv equals to nrt and this particular equation contains multiple constants so these constants have been derived from certain basic equations but it is not mentioned clearly in this post so i would like to explain you now today so getting into this topic so today i'll take the case of toluene distillation and the required boil up is almost 750 liter per hour and for the case so we are going to see how to estimate the vapor line size so first of all i would like to uh present you the conditions like the operating conditions and then i'll enter this deriving i'll enter into deriving this equation so the condition that i have taken is it's a vacuum distillation so the vacuum which is available on the reactor let's say it's 740 mm hg so automatically the pressure is going to be above 20 torr and the temperature is let's say 30 degree centigrade and i am going to convert this 30 degree centigrade into for heat so it's 86 degrees for heat and then i would like to convert this for heat into rankin So today we are going to perform the calculation using the FPS system. So I'll convert this mass of boil up into LB per hour by multiplying with two point two. and the molecular weight is 92.14 lb per lb mole so this is the given data and now let's get into the equation derivation so i'll use the basic equation 
of ideal gas law that is PV equals to nRT and using this I am going to make two equations one for the operating conditions and the second for the standard conditions so the first one is P1 V1 equals to N1 R and T1 so let's say this is for the operating conditions and the second equation is P2 V2 equals to N2 R T2 this is for standard conditions and now first of all let's mention about the operating conditions like uh, already we have taken this operating conditions and I'll try to mention about the standard conditions the standard conditions are going to be pressure equals to 760 torque and V2 so this is a constant which everyone is asking me to derive so I'll be deriving it I'll be mentioning it in feet cube and then uh, N2 this is going to be 1 LB per LB mole and the next one is T2 this is 492 Rankin so this 492 Rankin refers to 0 degree centigrade and now we are going to calculate the volume of 1 pound mole of an ideal gas which is going to occupy at standard content I mean the at standard condition of 32 degree foreign heat or 0 degree centigrade or 490 degree ranking at 1 atmosphere pressure so we are going to use the same formula that is PV equals to NRT and we are going to identify the value of V so here V equals to NRT by P and in this particular equation so we are going to use I mean N refers to 1 LB per LB mole multiplied with the universal gas constant that is 0 0.7302 so the units are going to be feet cube atmosphere and I am going to multiply this with 492 degree ranking divide with 1 so this is going to be the atmospheres like the pressure so here you got 359 and the units are going to be feet cube okay and this is nothing but our V2 and now let's divide this op, uh, the equation of operation condition 1 to the standard condition equation so it is going to be like V1 by V2 equals to N1 by N2 into T1 by T2 into P2 by P1 so this is the equation and now let's include all these parameters which are calculated so here the V1 equals to v2 multiplied with n1 by n2 so here n1 refers to the operational operational conditions and n2 refers to 1 lb per lb mole and this n1 i'll be converting this into like as it's a mole it's nothing but weight divided by gram molecular weight okay and t1 by t2 so t1 is the operational operational conditions and t2 is going to be the 492 ranking and again finally this P2 by P1 so here P2 is 760 torr divided by P1 
and if you are going to do this so you are going to get this volumetric flow rate in feet cube per hour so this is the equation i have demonstrated on my block and i'll rewrite this v2 as 359 so this is the equation which you have used for the calculation and now let's try to calculate the volumetric flow rate with respect to these parameters like the operational parameters so v1 which is in feet cube per hour and here go, you are going to get 359 multiplied by uh, this w refers to the mass of uh, the boil up mass in lb square r and this divided by the molecular weight multiplied by t1 by 492 so here the temperature is 546 degrees Rankin divided with 492 multiplied by 760 by pressure so here the pressure is 20 torr on the system so i'll be doing this and this is feet cube per hour and i'll be converting this feet cube per hour into feet cube per minute divided with 60 so this is feet cube per minute And now whenever you are going to operate a system under vacuum, so there will be certain air seepage into the system through the material of construction. And to compensate that air seepage, so I will be taking the air load that is going to enter into the system as 2 kg per hour. So instead of this particular boil up, so I will be doing the same calculation for air now. I will mention it as VA, that means it refers to air. So this is in feet cube per hour. First of all, I'll be doing, and here I'll be taking the same constant that is 359 multiplied by weight. So weight is nothing but I have taken a air load of 2 kg per hour. So I'll be taking 2 multiplied with 2.2 to convert this into lbs divided with the molecular weight of air that is 28.84 and T1 so this is going to be the operating temperature divided by 492 that is the standard ranking multiplied with P2 by P1 so that is 760 divided by P1 that is 20 torque here okay so this I'll be getting in so fit cube per hour and then I'll be converting this into feet cube per minute by dividing with 60 now let's calculate the total volumetric flow rate so v total this is nothing but the summation of toline plus the air seepage so this is going to be in feet cube per minute and now we need to divide this with the velocity under vacuum so I got certain standards for velocity under vacuum and the standards are going to be with respect to the pressure that is being maintained on the system. So here I'll be mentioning tor and this is going to be velocity under vacuum in feet per second. So here it is 2 tor, 5 tor, 10 tor. 20 100 and after this you can take directly a normal distillation like in between in between 100 to normal distillation you can take the same value so this is going to be approx 230 feet per second and if it's a fight or it is going to be approx 200 feet per second and if it's a 10 tor it's 190 feet per second and if it's a 20 tor it's 170 feet per second and if it's a 100 tor it's going to be 150 feet per second if it's a normal distillation so you can take in the range of 120 feet per second and now let's divide 
this particular flow rate with this velocity and directly in order to get this diameter so I have defined an equation for getting the diameter directly so this is diameter equals to 0 0.146 multiplied by so the total flow rate divided by the velocity so here it's operating under 20 torr so I'll be taking the velocity corresponding to 20 torr this to the power 0.5 so this is in feet so I'll be converting this into inches now by multiplying with 12 so that means you need approx 9 inch of vapor line to get almost 750 liter per hour of boil up at 20 torr vacuum and I think the next question is going to be how we have defined this particular equation for diameter so it is nothing but by converting this velocity which is in feet per second so I have converted this into feet per minute why because here you got a volumetric flow rate in feet, per, feet cube per minute so to match this so I have converted this and then I got a constant that is 0.146 okay so if you like our video please do share the video with your dear ones and also please subscribe to our channel so thanks for watching the video if you have any other queries related to this particular video so you can write us a mail at pharmacalci823 at the rate gmail.com so i'll be attaching this particular sheet for your friends in the description and you can download it for free so thanks for watching the video